Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting growing guide here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are going to love this one because we've been asked to do some interesting and exotic plants for growing guides. And I, I kept telling people, I said, hold on, hold on, we got something happening, just stay patient. So the time has come. Thank you all for staying patient. We have a, a nice setup here uh, that we just put up. Hopefully you all saw the video. Now these are our raised beds that we put together in under five minutes. They cost us, well, we got them on discount, less than uh, 10 bucks a piece. So this raised bed was just a necessity for this spot here. And one of the benefits of having it be cedar is it's gonna be a long time before we have to worry about it rotting because the plants we're putting in it are, their, their, their plants are gonna be around here for a long time. So uh, the reason why we put this raised bed here is because the plants that we're planting are all kind of exotic plants that kind of need this protection. We have real good sun exposure, all day sun. So we're gonna get lots and lots of sun. We do have a, a maple tree here that's gonna put on some leaves. That's gonna provide some shade. But for the most part, we have at least six to eight hours of beautiful full sun. And on top of that, what we also have is this shed here that's going to act as a microclimate. We'll do lots more videos on microclimates, but this is why. A microclimate just basically uh, helps you kind of move further south without actually moving further south. Uh, so this shed here will kind of uh, heat up during the day and it'll let that heat out during the night, which is so important uh, for these plants because they're right on the fringe. So uh, here it, uh, where we're located is zone six but it's also all surrounded by zone five. And the reason is because Lake Huron acts as another microclimate. So we have a microclimate and a microclimate. And uh, the more microclimates you have, I guess the, the, the better chance you have of success. So what are we planting today? Or we, what are we gonna show you how to grow today? We are going to be doing a growing guide on pomegranates. So uh, a lot of you don't know this, but pomegranates are, there are some very cold hardy varieties. And the pomegranate we have behind us is called a Russian cold hardy pomegranate. It is a uh, cold hardiness of six. So if you live in a zone uh, uh, zone six, uh, it's gonna do, it's going to uh, maybe not do the best, but it's going to at least survive the winters. Um, and so we have uh, this behind us. It is in a, uh, it's in a uh, three gallon pot. It is a fully mature uh, bush. It's actually beginning to fruit and flower, which we'll show you those. Um, but come on in close. Let's talk about how we plant it, how we take care of it, so it does really well for you. So you can see here, this plant is already just loaded up with beautiful flowers. Well, the uh, buds that are going to turn into flowers, just tons of them. It's, they've come on so heavy in the past few, uh, past few days here that we've had it. Now, we did order this online. I'll post a link to where we got it. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. I have no complaints so far. I mean, the way they shipped it was actually in soil, which was great. Um, we got it from a website called Fast Growing Trees. Um, you know, not getting paid or affiliated with them whatsoever. Uh, I just think what they do is spectacular quality. So we also got the fig that we'll be planting up later. That you'll see that in another growing guide on figs. So uh, what we want to do is we want to plant this plant. It is a deciduous. It's a deciduous bush, so it's going to lose its its flower or its uh, leaves in the winter time. We don't want to uh, bury this too deep because um, what happens a lot of times with deciduous uh, plants is that they have to survive through some cold, wet conditions, and that leads to uh, to stem rot very commonly. Um, so we don't want to dig the hole too much deeper than what it already is is planted in. And another thing with the soil is we're using pure compost. These plants, that the, plant, the plants that we're, are going to be coming up in this kind of exotic plant growing guide series, is uh, they all require pH balanced soil, so a pH of seven, and they also need very fertile soil because the conditions they grow in, we can't have uh, we can't have any lacking root development. We have to really boost the root development to get them down deep. Uh, like we talk about with that, that root zone, it's so important um, to get the roots deep down where there's not gonna be any chance of them dying. Um, so I think we're just about there. So we're gonna dig that just about as big as the root ball is. So we're just gonna backfill around the plant, really pack that soil in. Now, when we talk about fertilizing, we're not going to fertilize this for 
a little while, I typically say about three months, um, to really encourage the roots to go out. It seems counterproductive, but when you, uh, when you first plant these plants, you want to encourage the roots to go out, and their job is to find water and nutrients. So yes, we will water them right at the base, but as far as nutrients go, they're gonna, they're gonna send out their roots looking for those nutrients, and that's where you're gonna get real good uh, root penetration throughout the soil here. Now, another thing about the soil is that it needs to be very well draining. Compost has really good drainage, but if you live in a place that does not have really good drainage, mix in some sand or some organic matter, something to really uh, increase that drainage because um, again, you don't want wet roots. That's really gonna lead to some root rot. Um, and then finally, when it does come to fertilizing, obviously, like I said, three uh, about three months is as long as we're gonna wait to start fertilizing. And when we do fertilize, it's gonna be a very nitrogen rich fertilizer. So I get asked all the time, what is a really good nitrogen source? Since obviously we wanna boost leaf growth, get it growing really fast, get it really developed. Um, you know, what is a really good nitrogen source that's going to give us that high potency? Uh, my answer would be Trifecta Plus. That's what we use on all of our plants here, fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, doesn't matter. They all get Trifecta Plus. But if you don't have access to Trifecta Plus, Another really good option is either fish emulsion or uh, just a just a really pretty basic blood meal. Um, there's a lot of different companies that sell blood meal, but blood meal pretty much across the board is gonna be around a 10 to 12% nitrogen by weight. And that's really great. I and mean, that's an awesome amount of nitrogen for your plants. It's gonna get them up and growing, getting them really green. Um, so now that we've uh, talked about fertilizing, um, oh, the final part to fertilizing is in the fall, around October, we're gonna give them a very good dose of, of phosphorus to just kick the, the roots into final final uh, preparatory mode to get ready for uh, you know to get ready for winter because um, we really have to get them prepared especially because we're in the very very fringe of them uh, you know not coming back uh, the next year so that's all there is to fertilizing now when it comes to temperatures and sunlight these are really important especially when you're in a fringe zone if you're in you know, zone seven zone eight you're absolutely fine. You can grow pomegranates, no problem at all. Um, but temperatures, we need to make sure that they're in a place that's going to have temperatures of consistently in the 70s and 80s in peak season. 90s are great, um, hundreds is kind of pushing it. That's definitely gonna start stressing the plant out. But the warmer, the better. Pomegranates are uh, a Mediterranean uh, fruit. So when it's this far up, we don't really have Mediterranean climates. So um, again, that this microclimate is going to be key to the plant's survival. So make sure that it just, just make sure that it really regularly gets in the 70s and 80s, and you're gonna do fine there. Now, when it comes to sunlight, sunlight is also so important because if you don't get at least seven hours of full sun, you're gonna be sorry out of luck because uh, these plants, they require all that sun exposure to produce the sugars that are going to be in the basically helping the plant grow and sending them down into the roots that help the plant survive through the winter. It's extremely important to, to store as many sugars as possible. And so if you're getting on the lower end of the, of the full light spectrum, like four or five hours, it might not die, but it's certainly not going to have enough energy stored to come out of dormancy in the spring. And that's really truly what kills a lot of your plants. Now you all might be wondering, what about pollination? Um, what is gonna pollinate these pomegranates? The good news is that uh, pomegranates are self-fertile. There are some that require a cross to do better. However, most of your cultivated pomegranate varieties don't need a cross. So you can get, you can get by with just planting one. Now, another thing is that with, with pollinating, um, it does help. It certainly does help to come by and with a, uh, a tooth, not a toothbrush, a paintbrush, and, and just kind of tickle the flowers a little bit and help transfer that pollen around because uh, you will find that since these are qu uh, quite foreign to most, most pollinators, um, they're gonna have a harder time because your pollinators don't normally come in contact with pomegranates all that often if you're this far north. So um, a lot of your pollinators, they stick to plants that they're pretty familiar with. And so if they see a pomegranate, they might not even realize that it's it's something that they would uh, you know enjoy pollinating. So it does definitely help to increase that production with um, with a, a paintbrush. And uh, we can do more on that when these flowers open and get blooming. Um, now the very final thing that I do want to talk about is spacing. So spacing of your pomegranates, if you do decide to get more than one, is really important because they start out small now. 
but they get big quick. They get really big quick because they are a low lying bush, but they actually are uh, more of a, a spreading low lying bush. They don't get very tall. They might only get about maybe three feet tall at most, but they will get about four and a half, five feet wide in diameter. So it's a very large bush that's going to take up this entire bed, definitely without a doubt by the time it's fully mature. So make sure, I think, I, I think that is the biggest mistake that I see people making is they assume that the plant is, well, the plant is small, but they assume that the plant's going to stay this small for a long period of time and they don't have a, the future uh, you know, forward looking uh, vision of how big it's going to get. So they'll plant this thing full of other perennials and then they're surprised when they have to pull other perennials up and they end up killing some in, in the process. And it's best to just assume um, that it's going to get that large. Now I will come through here and I will plant some annuals that I can just pull out at the end of the year to kind of take up that space and, and use the space wisely. But definitely I will stick absolutely no other perennials in here because this space is going to be fully taken up in, in no less than two or three years with this plant here. So um, just another thing to keep in mind so you can maximize your success in the, uh, in the pomegranate growing world here. So um, I'm really excited about this. Definitely something new on the channel that I think is going to be very fun to follow. So make sure that you all post your comments in the comments box below uh, how excited you are that we're growing pomegranates. I certainly am geeked. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting and uh, absolutely cannot wait to get some fruit. So, all right, hopefully you all enjoyed this growing guide. As always, make sure to check out migardener.com and there's a media tab that has a growing guide playlist with over 30 fruit and vegetable growing guides. And uh, this will be on that same playlist. So there's a lot of cool information over there that I recommend checking out. And also, if you have not yet, click that subscribe button or that like button. That really does help us out and we love that as well. So that's about it for uh, growing pomegranates. Again, I recommend growing them if you're in zone six or lower. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. This is Luke from the On My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. See ya, bye.